Rowers are getting coached constantly. Coxswains, on the other hand, are regularly told nothing. Every coxswain I speak to, they say, well, I don't get into coaching at home. I don't get into coaching at home. Well, it's true. It's a universal problem. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate coxswains because they know that they're not getting the education. How many people here have coaches at home that coach them personally as a coxswain every day? We don't get any coaching. So who's your coach then? Yourself. You got to coach yourself. Creating the whole Coxswain's Camp and Coxswain's Education is all about awareness, organization, direction, and steering. Each day is basically deeply rooted in those four elements. It all ties into awareness, which is the most important of the elements, to guide these coxswains so that they can go home, they can be better at any one of those things. Organization. If you don't know where you're supposed to be, at what time you're supposed to be, and what other boats you're supposed to meet up with, you're not going to be able to sort of implement a proper practice. I learned that planning is key to coxing because if you don't have a plan, then you're thinking on the spot and thinking on the spot can go wrong really quickly. Direction is something huge for us. It's easy for them to say, oh, there's rush or someone's sky in their blade. But we don't want the coxswains to actually just state an obvious fact. We actually want them to have the direction on how to fix that. Five, four, shift ten and three. Make that shift now. Good length. Coxswains are curious as to what rowers are going through. They don't understand why their calls aren't having an impact. They don't understand often what calls to make to engage the rowers to affect that impact. When you're racing, if you do not have to think about what you're saying, you're going to steer better. You can focus on your steering. Detailed race plan allows for that. When we made our race plans and we came together, we talked through them with each other. That really helped because then they could ask me, well, why do you do this? And they had things in their race plans that made total sense that I never thought of before. And I, now I can add it to my race plans. And it really just ups not only my game, but all of our games. One of the main things that we worked on at this camp was awareness. So that means safety, so looking around in the water for debris, keeping an eye on the weather, communicating with other coxswains to make sure you're not going to collide. You have to be aware of the coaches, what they're telling you, what they want, and you also have to be aware of yourself and what you're saying and how it's impacting the rowers. You're able to see things from a different perspective and a different point of view. Like if it's just you, you can only really see the rowers and the other coxswain. But if you're on the launch, then you're able to see both coxswains, what they're doing to communicate with each other, or what they're doing to communicate with the rowers. Coxswains, even at a very basic level, they don't have a great view of what's going on when they're in the boat. It's hard for them to connect how it feels with what it looks like or what it should look like and that mental image. And to communicate with the rower, you have to translate it into how it's going to feel for the rower because the rower can't see it. So it's a very difficult thing to develop and young coxswains really don't have a lot of shot of doing it. What do we think right now? Did she line up in the right place? How's her angle? She's adjusting. Now how's her angle? Better. A little bit better. It's all about awareness. It's the number one thing. Where can they learn? You know, where are they tapped into what's going on around them? Their coaches. What are their coaches saying? How are their coaches saying it? Why are their coaches saying it? The rowers. What are they saying? How are they saying it? And what happens is that once they're able to sort of open their own eyes to all the resources around them, then they really are able to sort of, you know, make themselves better and improve their own coxing. I love being amongst all these other coxswains. It's like being in my own group of people. They understand me, and maybe throughout the year I can just actually call them up, ask them questions if I'm having a problem, or just talking. Sometimes it's just great to talk to another coxswain because they know what you're going through. It's kind of a lonely profession, and since there's very little education inherent to it, we think that developing coxswains is another kind of method to develop the rowing community. I think frequently that a coxswain will consider himself or herself low man on the totem pole, that anybody could do it, that all you have to be is light and awake. But it's much more than that, and when you get good, people know you're good. People respect a coxswain who's good. I can get in a boat and they will go faster simply because they think I'm in it, and because I'm in it, they will go faster. That's not necessarily true, but the oarsmen believe it, and when they believe it, it happens. We want to see
see toxin education to become something that's so important that everyone understands it and they respect it that literally they're going to bend over backwards to get their toxins educated because that's going to be the difference between a gold medal and not even making the final.